Hey everyone, Mario again, coming at you another review. Uh, this is the first of a series of three reviews we're going to be seeing on this uh, channel where I'm going to be reviewing three cinematic adaptations. Hold on again. I, I knew I should have grabbed this when I first started, but I know dead air, sorry. Where I'll be reviewing three cinematic adaptations of this. Hamlet by William Shakespeare. To be or not to be. Not to be. <laughs> I know I couldn't resist the Arnold reference. A Claudius, you killed my father. Big mistake. Stay thy hand, fair prince. Who says I'm fair? Where did I get this? I know I just added that part in, but... Anyway, the three film versions that I'll be reviewing are the 90s version. There's two 90s versions. The ver version from 1990 starring uh, Mel Gibson. The one from 1996, directed and starring Kenneth Branagh. And today's feature from the 40s. I know someone's going to be like, what, the 40s? Yeah. And I don't really think I've reviewed that many films from the 40s. If ever. I think the only time I've ever reviewed films from around this time period had been in the Oscar reviews. But Anyway, the film in question... I'm double-checking because it says here we also did but says it was also directed by the lead star, Laurence Olivier, which the only film I've ever seen him in was a film I reviewed during Oscar reviews this year, and that was uh, The Boys from Brazil, which I mispronounced his last name, because I didn't know it was pronounced Olivier. I mean, I'm just looking at it, and I hadn't gone through the phonetic alphabet then. I still don't know a lot about the phonetic alphabet, but I can read phonetically better than I could then. But So I'm going to be able to probably translate people's names a little better now. But Laurence Olivier. Which, I don't know if this was his first Shakespeare film. I know he did a couple other ones. Titles off the top of my head, I can't remember. But this was the film that, as the consensus says, showed that Shakespeare f films could be profitable. And it actually has a good fan base. It has a 7.9 on IMDb, which for that is a very good score. 81 Rotten Tatoes with the audience and 90 with the critics. And it is a good film. And the only thing from the consensus I have to say that I haven't already said is that it paved the way for future cinematic interpretations, both of this source material, Hamlet, and his other film, and the other plays that Shakespeare did, you know, The Tempest, Much Do By Nothing, Romeo and Juliet, Stupid Young Love, among others. Yep, it was directed by him. He also did the screenplay, which I will say, since I had to read this for a second time this year, I first had to read it in 12th grade, which was six years ago, reading it for the second time. I liked it better this time, and I noticed some stuff, but having just read it, not even finished it not even a week ago, a lot of the stuff is fresh in my mind, hence why I want to do this now. I noticed a lot of the different ch the changes from the source material, and I have to say, some of them, it's like, okay, I'm surprised they cut that, but how they weaved in certain stuff is very creative. Now, uh, the original score is by William Walton, which he did a good job. It is a very uh, fitting score for the time period. Now, apparently the budget was 527530 I'm guessing pounds, because it has that little L symbol next to it. And it made over $3 million, which for the time period was a pretty great, was a pretty good size gross. Now, it also got Academy Awards. It won a couple, and it was nominated for a few. Here's what it won. It won Best Actor in a Leading Role, which I can say Olivier definitely deserved that. Best Art Direction, Black and White. Best Costume Design, Black and White. And Best Picture, which I can say definitely did deserve after watching it. It got a Best Actress in a Supporting Role nomination for Jean, for Jean Simmons, if I'm pronouncing it right. Best Score and Best Director, which, as you can already tell, I already think it deserved. It also got two Golden Globe Awards, Best Motion Picture Foreign and Best Actor. Definitely deserved. I'm going to guess from that that it was a foreign film, and I'm going to check to see. Oh, yeah, he, this is the film he did after Henry V, and then after this he did Richard III. These are his directing ones. He also did The Prince and the Showgirl, Three Sisters, and Hindle Wakes. Hindle Wakes, but... He did. He was a great. Looks like he was a great director of Shakespeare. I guess. I guess it was kind of fitting that Branagh did Hamlet as well. 
Now, the film of the source material, it cuts most of the cuts it makes is towards the lat is towards the end, but most of it involves characters that are either cut from the film, cut from the play when it's adapted to film, or to speed it up because. I think the only act that's in the film verbatim is the first act, because Hamlet is a five-act play. I know usually it's three-act stuff, but it's a five-act play. And the longest act, if I remember correctly, is, I believe, act four. Yeah, act four has seven scenes. Most of the other ones have a maximum of five, and the shortest one is the last act, because it only has two. And ironically, the first one is the one with the famous gravedigger scene. Now, the other actors in the film, of course, I haven't mentioned them. I know I was going to mention them. In addition to Olivier as Hamlet, we got Basil Sidney as Claudius, Eileen Hera Hurley as Gertrude. <clears throat> uh, we have uh, Norman Wooland as Horatio, Felix Almar. I'm going to. I'm going to the page because I'm going to have trouble with this and I want to check see if it has phonetic thing. If it doesn't have phon phonetic thing, I'm just going to spell his name because I don't want to get... Because I, re some, I re just so you guys know, I do get tired of people going there. It's pronounced blah, blah, blah. I know some of them are just trying to pronounce it, but some can be very... Good. I want to correct term, but I think you get it. Uh, nothing here. It's, in case it's, you're wondering, it's A-Y-L-M-E-R. I've never actually s come across... An A and a Y spelled like this, at least I can remember. But that was his stage name. His last part of his name was Joan, so I'll just, he was a Sir, so I'll just call him Sir Felix when I have to bring him up. Terence Morgan is Laertes, Polonius' son. Jean Simmons is Ophelia. Okay, I could see why she got it. She did a good job acting crazies. And of course, we've got John Laurie as for Francisco, as Midnight as Bernardo, two minor characters. Uh, Christopher Lee has a small role. He has no spoken lines. And of course, ironically, we got Peter Cushing in there as Osric, the fop waterfly, as Hamlet calls him. A waterfly. Now, I think everyone probably knows what the plot of Hamlet is, but I'm going to go over it. Hamlet, is, it takes place in Denmark at the castle of Elsinore, which, whenever that's mentioned where I live, he gets a laugh because one town over is a city called Lake Elsinore. It's sister city in name, so I think you can see the joke where people would laugh a little bit at that. More so when I was in high school because I went to Elsinore High, so whenever we would watch a movie version, they'd say, what brings you here to Elsinore? <laughs> it's like, yeah, 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 bring it in. Why would you want to go to Elsinore? Lake Elsinore, California. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious. I know, kind of funny. I bring up Star Wars when Peter Cushing is in this. I wonder if I did that. I wonder if I did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. But anyway, takes place at the castle of Elsinore. Our main characters: we got Hamlet. He is the prince, and he should be king. But the king is his uncle Claudius, who married his mother after Hamlet's father, Old Hamlet, passed away. Now, around this time, a ghost has been seen wandering the castle grounds, and because of it. I guess you can understand, people who see this are going to be a little suspicious. Uh, they call, two of the guards call in Horatio, who's a friend of Hamlet, to look at it. He sees it looks like the former king, so they go and tell Hamlet about it. Hamlet comes and talks with the ghost. The ghost tells him that he was murdered by Claudius. And from there, Hamlet is trying to find evidence that his uncle did it. First, he's going to act crazy. Then he has these actors that come in, put on a low performance. It's basically a doppelganger. Not doppelganger. It's an exact copy of the murder. Which, the way this scene plays out, they only do the first half, it's all mime, but it works so effectively. And the way that Olivier shot it makes it look like that everyone can tell something's wrong with the king instead of only a few people noticing, like in the play. But I think on screen that works. Now, of course, eventually Hamlet kills Polonius by accident, which leads to a great duel in the final scene, and of course it leads to everybody dying. I know someone's going to say, but that's a major spoiler. It's a tragedy. When you know it's a tragedy, you kind of expect a downbeat ending. That's why this is one of those times I don't actually hate the film when it has a downbeat ending because it kind of earns it. And if it's a tragedy, you know right away going in that there's going to be a slightly downbeat ending. It's kind of like, uh, I'm trying to think of a modern equivalent. I guess you could say like the ending of Star Wars Episode Three. 
it has a tragic ending yet a slightly upbeat it has that downbeat stuff but upbeat as well but so it's not fully an exact a good comparison but I think you get my point if it works like some other films can have downbeat endings like Blair Witch Project that one has a downbeat ending but it works then every other film in the same genre copied it and it became a cliche anyway I know I'm getting off topic but it works in this film now the way it translates the play to the screen amazing now I'll say this if you haven't read the play or you read it so long ago you don't remember everything about the play and you watch the film you'll be able to follow along the narrative pretty well because the way that it cuts from scene to scene works very well that you will not notice but having read the play a couple times and seen some of the other adaptations like the Brana version I can tell some of the minor stuff that was cut like the characters of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern totally cut I could say for the better because they really aren't very important to the plot at least as characters I mean in a play you can have them in the long version of the film you can have them but in a short version which the film is about 155 minutes long which is about two and a half hours so yeah, you don't really need them. Um, some minor scenes are trimmed back, like the whole scene with Reynaldo, I believe, was trimmed. Um, some scenes or minor scenes are abridged or done with voiceover and add in like some minor scenes, like Hamlet going to Ophelia is from a scene where she goes and talks to her father. That scene is kind of abridged just to a voiceover. Her supposed to be talking with her father and then him going to talk, going to talk with her. Ophelia's suicide is shot where you actually see her floating in the water and it hints that maybe she was actually swimming in her insanity without thinking that her outfit would maybe drown her uh, the whole beginning part of the gravedigger scene which is one of my favorite little bits in the play where uh, the gravedigger is making fun of uh, older people which since I have the play right here I'll read that line for you it is she to be buried in Christian burial when she willfully seeks her own salvation? Other one. I tell thee she is, therefore make her grave straight. The crowner hath sat on her and finds it Christian burial. How can that be unless she drowned herself in her own defense? And it goes from there. It is kind of funny. It's kind of ironic in the Brana version. That line, he said, self-defense, own defense, is played by Billy Crystal. So it comes off pretty funny. But anyway, I'm getting a little off topic. That part's out there, but the rest of the grave digger scene is dialogue is abridged at parts which I think it kind of works because Shakespeare even though he writes very well at times it does seem to to you know carry on at times but sometimes it works but sometimes it's like okay you could get to the point a little faster here which for the films and sometimes with stage productions they do abridge at times not fully but like sometimes cut out a couple words to make it the scenes flow a little better which on film helps a lot more than on stage because on stage you could pro you could adjust it a little bit or cut out lines at your discretion if the audience seems a little like you know but here it's interesting it's also interesting how they arranged Elsinore Castle now of the soliloquies only I think three of them were in the, actually four of them were in the final film technically one of them is not a soliloquy it's a speech Hamlet's two soliloquies that are in, this, are in the film are his first soliloquy where he's basically trashing his mother and of course the famous to be or not to be one. That one was interpreted pretty interesting though. Like him contemplating suicide, him imagining himself going over a cliff. Uh, I believe bits and pieces of Claudius's one was in there but that scene, you know, there was background noise and also I had to do something else very important so I was just listening so I couldn't tell fully if it was his. I know part of Hamlet's next one where he's contemplating whether he should kill his uncle there is there. And I know one of the soliloquies where he's basically trashing himself, the only line from that is the ending, and is that the play's the thing where I'll catch the conscience of the king, though. That part, I think, even though I like Olivier in it, that's probably the one part I'm like, okay, you overdid that a little bit. You could have probably done that a little bit more subtly. But I can understand at the point. It, it works a little bit, but it's like, that could have been done a little bit more subtly. Now, uh, Eileen Hurley... She w she looks like she's a little bit younger than Olivier, which makes me wonder in that, are they trying to play up a little bit of the incest angle? With Some people can argue there's an incest triangle between Hamlet, his uncle, and his mother. That that's probably one of his reasons for wanting to kill his uncle. I, can, I don't really see it personally, but I can see why others see it. I know that the, that the Gibson one also plays up that one a little bit, but... 
it's just interesting that they could do that. Um, I noticed that they rearranged the whole scene where uh, Laertes and Claudius are talking about how they're going to take care of Hamlet. They placed that afterwards. They did Osric. They did him pretty well as a fop. They even gave him an earlier scene to introduce him because Osric, I think, is a very funny character with how he is done as a fop. But I think it's a little odd that he's supposed to be like a sem at least as a yes man, he's supposed to be semi important in the court, yet he's never introduced till then. So having him be background in an earlier scene works. Actually, showing the pirate scene I thought was pretty fun. Um, any other characters deleted? Um, Reynaldo, I think I've already mentioned that. Uh, the, play the characters know, but the player doesn't get his good speech, which is not really needed. I liked that in this version, the female is actually a male, which is what would have been at the time. So it's interesting to see a young male actually trying to act like a female in a film. So it's like, that's probably similar to how it was done in Shakespeare's day, or at least a modern interpretation of it. So it's a little interesting to see. Um, I feel like I've already mentioned how they did the mur how they did the uh, murder of Gonzago uh, scene was pretty interesting. How they interpreted oh yeah I remember another character that's cut out Fortinbras. Important because in the book he's kind of a foil. He's one of the two foils that Hamlet has because he has two foils as an Avenger his foil is Laertes, as a devoted son and a prince his foil is Fortinbras, and a little bit of an Avenger there but that's very subtle. Fortin Braz and most of that whole thing involving him, not really brought up. The only time the name Fortin Braz is mentioned is in the uh, speech said by the gravedigger near the end, and that's because it's important dialogue. Now, I can understand why they delete him, so most of his dialogue near the end is given to Horatio, which works. And I do like that at the end, when it's revealed Claudius has been behind all this plot that actually some of the soldiers see that seem to turn on him, like pointing their spikes at him. That was a nice little touch, because I think... If it was shown that the king had done something so treacherous, I think some of the soldiers would turn on him. And another thing I like is that this film, at least with Gertrude, where Gertrude is concerned, they interpreted that she, at least by the end, knows that her new husband probably was, was responsible for her old husband's death. Which, how the play is written, you could play it off either way, that either she didn't know at all, she maybe she was in on it as feeling guilty, or she didn't know anything till the end and drank the poison accidentally. Oh, I just gave that a little spoiler away, but I have to mention stuff like this to talk about it. Considering how old this play is, I think everyone at least knows something about it. Because I think in, at least in a lot of schools it is mandatory reading, at least in high school. I mean, the only, I had to read three separate three separate Shakespeare plays in high school. I had to read Romeo and Juliet, Julius Caesar, Caesar, Caesar and then Hamlet. I didn't read one in 11th grade, I don't know why. Oh yeah, now I remember why. That was American literature. We read Huck Finn. And yes, it wasn't censored, but reading it out loud, we had to self-censor. But, as I get back on topic, I like that they showed that she actually knew the poison was there. That's a nice interpretation. And of course, Olivier's interpretation of Hamlet can be summed up in one of the things he says at the beginning. And it's probably the tagline I'll use for this review. This is the tragedy of a man who could not make up his mind. Which is kind of true, because... Hamlet does go back and forth a lot throughout the play. I mean, he's like, okay, I'm acting crazy, nothing's working. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, I'm going to kill him. Wait a minute, he's praying, no, I'm not going to kill him. Or like before that, he's like, dang it, I haven't done anything. I should have killed him by now. But wait, the play, yeah, 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 that will get him out. So he goes back and forth a little bit, and on, on also on certain things, like hit towards his mother, and then the whole thing. Some of it you could kind of chalk up to him you know, acting in his madness, like the whole thing involving Ophelia, because the way I look at it, he loved Ophelia, which kind of sums up his thing near the end when he gets into the little tussle with Laertes at the graveyard, but I know I could just spend probably an hour talk, talking about my views on Hamlet and then reading about it. Maybe if I ever do a fan commentary of the Brana film, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that. Hey, maybe that's what I'll do in place of just reviewing it, maybe, or maybe I'll do both. Maybe one day I'll do one, but anyway... Anyway, back, back on topic. Uh, Acting-wise, the actors all do very great. Olivier, he plays the role of Hamlet with such conviction that it doesn't really feel like he's reading from a script. You really believe that he is Hamlet saying this stuff, which is why I say he deserved the Academy Award for this. Uh, Basil did a great job as King Claudius. Not my favorite guy in the role, but he did a pretty good job. Uh, Eileen Harley did great as Gertrude. Well, I've already mentioned a little thing about her, and I like some of her nice little touches. 
Apparently she also played the role in 64 on Broadway, so that's interesting. Uh, Norman as Horatio, he did an okay job for it. He also was in Richard III, apparently. Sir Felix as Polonius, I thought he did a good job. He brought up the character pretty well, especially in his famous scene where he's going on and on about how your son is mad when he's saying he's trying to be brief, which is why Polonius is such a fun character to read. Uh, Terence is later he did a good job. The character's not really in the play that much, not much to talk about it for where he's there, he did a good job. Jean as Ophelia did a great job, especially during the insane stuff. The rest of the actors, they do good for what they're there for. Uh, behind the camera, Olivier did a magnificent job how he shot stuff, like how he shot the ghost. Those special effects still look pretty good. And it's like, I know some people say that, at least subconsciously, that maybe Vader, some of Darth Vader's stuff in Star Wars can be inspired by the ghost in Hamlet, more so considering that Vader is Luke's father. Or at least you can look at it maybe as a modern day interpretation of that. Watching this version, I can see why certain critics would view that, because the way he's shot here, I couldn't help but think of Darth Vader. At least with how it's done. He doesn't have like a booming deep voice, but it's just the way they make his voice sound slightly supernatural, and the way he's shot is like, this is this is Darth Vader, is like, this is like what Darth Vader's Force Ghost would be if he came as a Force Ghost in the armor. Um, the castle I mentioned shot very well. Some of Hamlet's crazy stuff shot pretty well. The Grand Hall of Elsinore, I just love all the scenes shot in there. Um, this is how he, uh, how it's edited together works. Like, when they do the abridged scenes, how they cut from, like, one scene that's, like, half abridged or make some dialogue abridged to a scene that's fully abridged, how they cut and all that. It's like I said earlier, if you even, even if you haven't read Hamlet or are just rusty on it, you could jump into this film, watch it and you would easily know what's going on. I mean, the, like I said, only three, technically four, but one is only mentioned, and that's Old Norway, Fort and Russ's uncle. They're the only characters, or at least important characters, cut, and it doesn't really hurt the play, hurt, the, hurt the film, at least in my opinion. If I were to give Hamlet by Laurence Olivier a rating, I would give it a four and a half out of five. Now, if you are a fan of Shakespeare and you haven't seen this film, I say track it down. 